KBN presents The House That Faith Built The channel where we document, dialogue, and display positive images of our people building homes, going off-grid, and developing agriculture We are your host. I'm Nashia And I'm Aya Episode 2 Foundation How We Got Started In this episode, we show you how we took the rusty trailer that you see before you and turned it into the finished product that you saw in the first episode. several days after we purchased the trailer just discussing the particulars of the trailer why i believe a boat trailer is a good suspect for building a um, tiny house on top of why it's pro- probably better than using like a rv trailer or any other trailer other than maybe an actual custom built trailer for tiny houses like the iron eagle trailer or any of those other trailers made by those tiny house trailer manufacturers so yeah, we showed you the trailer the other day. Uh, today on Naughty Life, we just got up this Sunday and we're like, you know, we kind of capped out our bill budget for this month, acquiring the trailer and all the associated fees with the towing rig and all that crap we had to do to get it and get other, a few other things and tools and such. So we capped out this month, so we're like, damn, what can we do? We're just going to sit here and let the trailer sit in its dysfunction and this repair state right now where it's all surface rust and boat rollers. We're going to get them off of there and start saving for the weld projects and stiffening up the chassis so we can go ahead and start building the floor joists to start framing up the walls to build the tiny house. So today, what we're doing is we're removing all of these removable and adjustable bolt rollers and assembly that goes with that. When you put a big old 3,000 or more pound bolt on this trailer, when it's down in the water, a marine grade trailer is a better trailer really to build a tiny house on. And I'll tell you because the water is, is corrosive to steel naturally. So if you get a trailer built to withstand that, it's gonna indeed be stronger than the average trailer that might have come off of an old used, uh, rusted out motor home or any other type of thing like that that's already had its life or function as a trailer on the road and it's already been rusted through. They don't put the same coating on the steel as they do on one of these guys. All right, cool. So in this next scene, I'm just basically gonna start by uh, explaining how I'm taking this trailer apart, how I'm gonna retrofit it and get it ready to be a house. I'm starting at the bow, which is the front of the boat, where the boat trailer's bow would have been, and there's a boat roller there. So you're gonna see me start talking about that. So we took a second to um, get our tool adjusted onto this uh, bolt, this fastener. And it turns out that they are not metric, they are standard, so they're um, they're, they're on the, the quarter inch basis or whatever. So basically the one that we found it was is the 11 16th, which translates to roughly 17 mil. Um, the bolts are a little bit rusted, so it didn't want to go on. So I thought, let me put a 19 on. And that, uh, because of the surface rust and the buildup on there was almost going to be tight enough to nut on there and actually bite. But if I would have used the 19 mil, I would have stripped out the head. So you just want to be careful and make sure that you choose the right socket to fit the job. In this case, we need a 17 mil, so we've got two 17 mils, and I'm just going to reverse crank like one direction this way and the other one this direction until we break the bolt loose. If I can't do it, I'll use uh, this material in a can called um, PB Bolt Blast, and it's a penetrating loop that gets down in there and breaks open the um, barrier between the, the surface rust and the metal. It looks like, in this case, today we're not probably going to need that because I'm already getting spinning as I'm turning and that should be that way because these are adjustable so they shouldn't really be locked on there too tight mostly for a bolt uh, yeah so that broke that loose it should have been that easy that's a good thing it's exactly what you want in a case like this in this case it's also threaded, it seems, through the cross member, so we have to back that out. And that's what I'm doing over here on this side. 
We've got one more up here on this front fastener. Um, it has a lock washer on it. So I'm kind of worried maybe it will be a little more difficult to get off, but hopefully not. But we'll see. And it's smaller too, so we gotta figure out the size of that. If I had to guess, it looks like possibly a 10 millimeter bolt. Oh, and the size of uh, drivers that we're using are 3 8 drivers. So they're, they're bigger than the quarter inch. If you tried to put like a quarter inch driver on one of these and try to turn it, you might snap the head on your driver. So make sure that the, let me show you. The size of your driver's head is sturdy enough to handle the weight and the, the strength of what you're trying to unbolt or bolt up. So you don't snap this drive off of here and have to go buy a whole new socket set. Stuff like that. Yeah, so I think buying a bolt, tra a bolt trailer is the better way to go. In my opinion, if you're gonna go with the old used trailer and stiffen it up, the bolt trailers are built with a better grade steel that can handle um, a marine application. Constantly being in and out of water that is meant to rust and eat through things. Mm -hmm. so. We've inspected all the welds. I used to do welding in high school and a little bit after on some fabrication jobs and stuff. And they're all still solid. Um, they can support my weight, which is a good test because I'm you know, pretty hefty, but also you can uh, take a five pound or a two pound hammer and hit your joints with some force. And if they don't crack, then they're not gonna bend under weight of building whatever you're building on the top. As you can see, man, this bolt was giving me a lot of headache. Seemed like it didn't want to come off at all. But I finally was able to bust that thing off of there. And in a couple seconds, we're about to see how I pull this bow uh, bolt roller off of here. So good. Over the time that we've been homeless, I've needed tools and I had to buy them. Because mm -hmm. now we have them. <laughs> Like so a many lot. tools we would not, we would have to buy that would like make the vet budget go way higher. Mm -hmm. We have them now. So. So people be trying to be so nosy, but they try to be sick about it. Like the same people that's probably you know, laughing at you. Like, oh, what they doing? Not in my business. Damn. Got it. Ha! Got it! Ha! Got it! Good job. Yeah, we're gonna kind of reef up on this thing a little bit, and then there you go. This, this steel is hmm. worth a lot of money if I don't even use this steel or resell this as a piece for someone to build a new boat trailer. This is good steel, so we'll go ahead and keep this to the side. All right, and you got it off. Like How'd you get that one off so easily? All right, y'all. So this must be three and a half, four hours later. It doesn't seem that long, but it's a nice <laughs> This is all the boat hardware come off the trailer. All the way back, if you've seen it earlier, you know, we cut in the picture, but that's pretty much what it was, the boat trailer is a boat trailer. Now, if you know steel and you understand, you can look at a boat trailer and go, damn, I'd pay house on that if I just get rid of certain features. So that's what we did. We removed those features, got rid of all of the boat roller hardware.
profanity in five, four, three, two. God damn it! Did you just do your finger? Yeah. Yeah, that's how you break your thumb right there. Ouch. That really did hurt. So that slowed the building down for a couple of weeks, but it didn't stop us. Obviously, we've gone a lot further since then. Come up at me, thank you. Damn, that's all it was. And he got it, folks, like he said he would. This is the last thing we needed to pull off today. Yeah, we decided to take off this little strut thing because anything that's pretty good up. We know we're also going to live a partly nomadic lifestyle from just our journeys as being homeless. Like we realized that it actually is something we like to do. <laughs> We want to be having a home base though too so the goal is uh to build the home base and then have another travel trailer we'll probably actually buy a manufactured one at that point i don't know maybe we'll build one i don't know because we don't really like the tech that they yeah i don't like how they do their stuff and the crap that you have to deal with yeah, yeah. thousands of dollars that same amount of money we could have built well, this that thing off. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> so. And that's pretty much the start of the project. So now we're well on our way to the tiny house. Hey. Peace. So that concludes episode two, the foundation. What we've done is we refixed the old trailer and pulled all the boat stuff off of it, which you'll see now. And we started here. And we ended up here. This has been another positive black production. This is your brother Nashia A. I'm here signing off, letting you guys know I appreciate you coming through and checking out our video. I'm gonna pass the mic to Aya. Hey guys, this is Aya. Once again, I wanna thank you for stopping by and checking out our tiny house build. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more black positive builds, then go ahead and subscribe to Naughty Life and be sure to get all the updates to all our new videos. And make sure you super smash that like button if you love us one time. Holla at your boy. And peace.